There are a lot of different types of blades that you can buy for a table saw. The selection can be overwhelming. There's blades for cross-cutting, blades for ripping, blades for making dados and grooves, and blades for cutting specialty materials. Wouldn't it be nice if you could, for the most part, just use one blade to cut everything? Well, there is, sort of. But even here, you're gonna be faced with a decision between a combination blade or a general purpose blade. Before comparing these two blades, we need to talk about the features of saw blades and how they work. But first, I wanted to remind you that if you've been dragging your heels on getting started with your own woodworking hobby because you feel a little bit overwhelmed with all of the information out there and just don't know where to begin, I have a step-by-step -step approach to learning woodworking called the Weekend Woodworker, no experience necessary. And if you're thinking that it's just probably too expensive to get all those tools, I have a free guide I want you to download showing you how you can get all the tools you'll need to get started, including a table saw for less than $1,000. Head over to mytoollist.com and download it today. So there's basically two main types of cuts that a blade needs to make. Rip cuts, generally long cuts along the grain of a board, and cross cuts, cutting against the grain of the wood. A rip cut usually involves removing a a lot more material than a cross cut. It's not unusual to cut through, say, three feet of wood. However, since you're cutting with the grain, the saw won't be severing the wood fibers like it does with a cross cut. The fewer teeth on a blade, the more aggressive it'll cut. So a rip cutting blade will usually have between 10 and 30 teeth to speed up the long cut and reduce overheating. Between the teeth are large gullets that facilitate the removal of sawdust. If you've ever tried to rip a long board using a fine tooth blade, you'll know that those small gullets between the teeth get clogged with sawdust, the cut slows down to a crawl and it probably will leave burn marks. You might even start to have to force the wood through the blade, which can be unsafe. To make the cut even faster, the teeth on a rip blade are flat topped ground. You'll see this indicated as FTG. The tips of the teeth are flat, like chisel, so that they can plow through a board. Since they're cutting along with the fibers of the wood, they leave a smooth, clean cut. A cross cut is typically a much shorter cut across a board requiring the removal of a lot less material. The task for a cross cut blade is to sever the fibers of the wood cleanly without leaving them ragged. The more teeth a blade has, the cleaner a cut it'll produce. So first, a cross cut blade has a lot more teeth, usually between 60 and 100. The time spent burrowing through the board is minimal compared to a rip cut, so those large gullets aren't necessary for large amounts of sawdust removal. But equally important is the type of tooth on a crosscut blade. A flat ground tooth, like on a rip blade, will just chew up the fibers of the wood, leaving ragged, torn out edges. Instead, the teeth of a crosscut blade are beveled, allowing each tooth to score the fibers cleanly, more like a knife. One tooth is beveled in one direction, and then the next tooth is beveled in the opposite direction. These are called alternating top bevels, or ATB, and make high quality cross cuts. Some blades increase the angle of these bevels. These are called high ATB and give you an even cleaner cross cut and are especially good for plywood or laminates that have thin top veneers that can easily chip. The only drawback to high ATB teeth is that they wear out quicker than plain old ATB teeth. If you were paying close attention, you notice that there's an area between the 10 to 30 tooth rip blade and the 60 to 100 tooth crosscut blade. This is the middle zone of the 40 and 50 tooth blades, the general purpose and combination blades. The beauty of these is that you only need one blade on your saw to cut almost everything. And I know the first thing you're probably thinking is that the trade-off is gonna be the quality of the cut and that if you want the absolute best quality cuts, you should always use a crosscut blade for crosscuts and a rip blade for ripping. Well, this is a bit of a controversial opinion, but with the quality of engineering and manufacturing of blades today, there's very little reason to keep swapping out blades. I've been using combination and general purpose blades for years, made thousands of cuts, and 
the quality of my cuts is always near perfect. A lot of woodworkers tend to think that dedicated cross cut and rip blades will give them that slight edge they need to produce better quality projects. And many years ago, that might have been the case. I'll bet, I'll bet you though, even today, there's probably lab experiments with microscopic views of wood fibers showing that dedicated blades do produce cleaner cuts. But in my experience in the real world, the difference in the quality of cuts is imperceptible. And let's face it, most people aren't gonna be examining Uncle Barry's handmade coffee table with a microscope. Let's look at a combination blade first. Like the name implies, it's a combination of rip blade and cross cut blade. Usually a combo blade has 50 teeth. 40 of those are alternating top bevel teeth for cross cutting. These are usually set at about a 15 degree bevel or so. These are arranged in groups of four. In front of each set of cross cut teeth is a flat top ground tooth called a raker. There are 10 of these on each blade for making rip cuts. This also produces a flat bottom cut for making grooves or dados. In front of each raker tooth is a deep gullet for sawdust extraction when making rip cuts. The general purpose blade kind of combines the features of a combination blade. It has 40 teeth instead of 50 and they're all the same. There's no flat top raker teeth. With fewer teeth evenly spaced, the blade has room for some pretty deep gullets making rip cuts a breeze, probably a little faster than combination blades. Another big difference is that general purpose blades usually have high ATB teeth. In other words, the bevel is at a much steeper angle, usually about 30 degrees. This produces cleaner cross cuts than the combination blade, as well as cleaner cuts on plywood, especially hardwood plywoods that have that paper thin top veneer. Like I mentioned earlier, the biggest drawback to high ATB teeth is that they'll dull much faster, especially if you're cutting really dense sheet goods like MDF or melamine. One more additional benefit is that general purpose blades are usually cheaper than combination blades, but you'll have to buy a new one or get it sharpened more frequently. So over time, the expense may be about the same. One other thing to keep in mind is that the number of teeth and the shape of the teeth can vary depending on the manufacturer. I have a general purpose blade, for instance, that only has 32 teeth. But in general, general purpose blades have 40 teeth and combination blades have 50. I really believe in having a primary saw blade, one that you can just leave on the saw and get good results with almost any material. All things considered, I think that the benefits of a 40 tooth general purpose blade slightly outweigh the combination blade, but only very slightly, mostly because it seems to rip boards a little bit faster and the, the high ATB teeth give you a cleaner cross cut and it's a little bit cheaper. But if you cut a lot of really dense manufactured material like MDF, a combination blade is probably a better choice or if you just need to make a lot of flat bottom cuts. But again, in my experience, the differences between these two blades are negligible. If you want to test out these blades for yourself, I'll include links down in the description. Thanks for watching.